Okay, hi. I will tell the story about Congress Expo. This story, in fact, is wrong. There are, there are 1,000 stories of this building. It's probably the building with the most stories I ever heard and ever experienced. Um, it's a project that started also a long time ago. It was my first project with OMA and I just set up the office. So I, I had my Renzo piano background. So I will tell you a little how I worked and combined the approaches of Renzo piano and uh, Rem Kolhas. Um, OMA uh, had an approach for this large project. It was not an extra large project. That was more urban scale. It was a large project, six, uh, 300 meters long, 160 meters wide, 25 meters high, uh, three programs, and the, the budget was extremely, extremely low. It was almost like an industrial building. And the, to combine um, high expectations in terms of architecture, or a very expressive architecture with a low budget, uh, you must set up special strategies. And probably um, with Renzo Piano it would have been a little complicated to do that. Um, but obviously for OMA that was not a problem at all. It was just a starting point. And all the concepts started from this idea, it must be a cheap building. So. A facade basically has three types of, of walls. They can be transparent, translucent or opaque. And we set up a, a logic. One, uh, every, every type of facade should be, could be developed as a, as a regular facade, as a very cheap facade, or as a, a little more expensive, more, they call it sublime, a sublime facade. With, with those variations, so three types of uh, transparency, three types of budget. So we had nine, nine types of projects of uh, facade types to develop. And that is what we, that's what we did. And of course, to, to find uh, cheap uh, solutions, we very quickly were inspired by the industrial buildings. The, it's a um, very cost-efficient uh, construction. Uh, where the facade is generally based on uh, metal sheets that overlap. And the overlapping is a kind of concept that we uh, started using uh, on this project. And that was, I felt, a, a, a very inspiring thing. Not that we wanted to do industrial uh, building looking uh, facade, but it was uh, just the simplest and the cheapest way to get a waterproofing. So it was fair to think that all the cheap solutions would have this kind of uh, requirement, so should have been the same logic um, to be developed further. So, so that's what we did. And how could I combine uh, Renzo Piano's approach with OMA it was that the, when you have a cheap detail, um, it is very difficult to say I have a, then a regular detail and then I have a, a, a sublime detail. It was much more easier to say I have a cheap detail and it's only the infill material that will change. It will go from a simple um, glass facade to an IGU facade or to an IGU with a little complex geometry. That was the kind of logic that we had. So the, um, the detail was designed in a, in a Renzo Piano style. Uh, OMA doesn't know this, this is a secret story. Um, and the, but the, the final building obviously looks like a fantastic OMA building, uh, very brutal uh, and just very raw as, it, as you could expect it from, uh, from a project where there is low budget. One of the particularities of this uh, project is that I told you there are nine types of facade basically that are combined. And because it is a big building, every part of the facade is developed with its own logic. And the own logic it means uh, it must be transparent, translucent or opaque, and it must be still, let's say, cheap. So every facade is optimized. And when you optimize every facade, it's quite hard to make the connection between uh, those systems because you have two completely different logics that uh, meet at some point. That was not a problem and uh, I learned with OMA that um, when you have two facades that clashes one into each other, 
In fact, that clash, what, however you solve it, it reveals the qualities of both facades. And so finally, that clash is a kind of interesting moment. It's not a, something where the things go wrong. It is just the moment where two different logics meet each other. That was completely... I was not used to that with Renzo Piano. Obviously, in Renzo Piano, a uh, way of thinking, every, um, every detail should, um, should be designed in, in a perfect way and in such a way that they can connect and it can do all the things on the building um, with, with small iterations and alterations, but not, no changes and no, no, not such uh, conflict, in fact. The Renzo Piano's design has no conflict. And OMA's projects, they accept the conflicts and, okay, they, they, they think that is an interesting approach for architecture. And I agree with that. And it's, by the way, it's a very cheap way because every part can be optimized and you don't need to care about the whole thing uh, permanently. Um, what I found really interesting on this project is that the OMA team was extremely young. Uh, even Ram Colas was young, I was young. Um, we were all relatively unexperienced and we managed to, to make this building. It is still there, it is working, the people are happy. Um, so now I have a question. Huh? Does it, is it logic that only young people are innovative? And, uh, and I often see that more experienced people become less innovative. I don't know why. Um, I can only say that in VSA probably we are not thinking that way. Thanks. Okay, there are a few. Uh, I try to.